What's um what's next? I want the phrase dos cerveza per favor. Okay. Because um I've lived in Spain for like over a year of my life. Of course you have, yeah, yeah, yeah. But the reason I picked dos cerveza per favor is because um it was just such a fun time for me that time. And there was a particular year, I can't remember the exact year, but like Love Island was just this phenomenon. And like England had had that really deep run in like, I think it was the World Cup or was it the Euros? They lost the, to Croatia. The, that was the World Cup. Was, World, it? was it the World Cup? 2019, we had a decent run. And 2022 was the Euros. Yeah, it'll be earlier. So it'll be, it must be the Maybe World Cup. it was Cup. 2016. Because it's the first year you like, what? 2018. 2018. 2018. Yeah. Yeah, 2018. Love Island was, and then like, I remember people were sending me photos of like, Pubs would have like the England games on in yeah. the pub, and they would keep one TV in the corner of the pub for Love Island and stuff. Oh wow! Just this really lovely time. And before the England Croatia game, I went to the bar. But it was such a like lovely so I was always out with people, and I went to bar to order a drink, and I went to order a beer, and then I realised because it's such a social time, I actually didn't know the Spanish for one. <laughs> like, wow. I literally didn't know. <laughs> so I remember I took. I just said dos cerveza per favor, which is two beers, please. And they mm. gave me two beers. And I just sat on um, this like little stool outside. And I, I think I still smoked in, maybe. I was having a cigarette and like a thing. And like, there's a bit of football on. Like, m people had like a, even my closest friends had like a Love Island WhatsApp group. They talk about Love Island. Like, it wasn't even a thing that I was involved in that show at all. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I so distinctly remember this moment of being like, oh man, like, I'm part of something really like special now and it felt really cool. But and it's so intrinsically to attach that st phrase. But you're also, you're part, you're part of a sort of cultural m m phenomena and you're, but, but it's also just your everyday life and you're just yeah. having a beer in the sun. Yeah. Knowing that this big thing has kind of gone mad. And it was nice knowing this thing's kind of gone mad and I'm just in a pub surrounded by leg legitimately German pensioners who obviously have no idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we, so we're not in it. So it was sort of a, a really surreal thing. Like when I, when I do it from home, you still like get in the tube to co come here or whatever. And like, you can see people have got their iPhones and they're watching like last night's episode on like ITVX yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So you sort of get an idea. And obviously because the show has been going for like 11 series now, it's sort of, come to a much more calm place there's yeah. not this sort of like media furore and like madness around it so um but you can sort of contextualize it but when you're in it's so weird especially like when you're in spain you've got no idea for it. and especially that year 2018 i mean for me like everything like everything changed. like i was part of this thing and became sort of known but i was in spain mm. so i like did I, 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 i'm trying to do this for context i don't want to come across like prick basically but like it's like for example i'd go to like i basically done like a room a gig above a pub to like 40 people yeah. and didn't fill it yeah went to spain for two months didn't set foot in england came home and booked the hammers of apollo yeah yeah and you're like this is what yeah yeah like it was such was a that, mad time and what was that like then that doing the apollo do you know what because it's a really special venue yeah I, I, I sort of wish i drank it I suppose everyone, I'm sort of, the, my biggest, I don't know if I'll ever be back in a place where I do the Apollo. And again, I, that doesn't really, I hope that doesn't come across as like a woe is me thing. Because like, yeah. I did the fucking Apollo. Like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, I'd love to do it twice because I was so nervous and like, the only, Joel Isett, we spoke once and he, thank God, he said to me what he does now is he goes out before his support act. And does a bit because it makes the gig easier for the support act because he's like, here's my friend who I think's great. And yes. you've said to their their eyes, yes. so the support act has a better gig. Yeah. But also you get rid of all your like, fuck, nerves yeah, yeah, before yeah. the gig. So you get rid of them. Then you watch your support act have a nice time and then you have a break and then you can come in and be like, yes. great. Yeah. Um, I, but yeah, so it was sort of, I sort of semi remember it. I don't really remember what I dead on that day and I certainly hadn't played a room that size before so like doing well I think I had but not doing like a on 90 minute own. show yeah, yeah, yeah. so it's, like that was wild yeah but it's also like it's proper like FA Cup final syndrome isn't it that you're just 
you, you, it's so important you don't have time to go, oh, that's what the grass feels like. That's what the crowd looks like. Yeah. This is my cup of tea before the game. That you, you know, it's it's all of that. You because you're just in this like hyper concentrated state where it can't be fun until it's finished. Yeah. And then it will be fun because you do really well, the crowd laugh. But the consequence to that is that you don't get to have any of the fun. Yes. But, but until you do it the second time. It's like I think Kenny Dargleish said that that his he was envious of his family because he never got to sit in the cop he never felt what it was like to experience the game yeah because he was like going fuck i'm playing the game do you know yeah, what I mean? yeah. he, he had to do it all and play the game he didn't get to enjoy his football career because he had to do it i know well, and that, he was kenny Dalglish. i think that is the biggest i think that must be the biggest thing that anyone says like looking back it's like i wish i just enjoyed those moments mm. more i think that's probably like that would be my biggest from that um whirlwind of like Love Island those like those three two three years where it was genuinely insane to me I wish I'd like taken a step back more and been like because I think also I think as a, as a defense mechanism whatever it was I think I didn't really think about playing the Apollo because I was just like my I do the Apollo and I I don't think that was an arrogance I think that was my brain going right you we have to sort of pretend to each other this is a completely normal thing to do otherwise you'll go insane mm. and it literally wasn't until I got and I think I wasn't maybe wasn't as prepared because then when I got there everybody went oh actually no this is insane mm, mm, mm. do you know what I mean and mm. I hadn't thought about it. people for weeks were like you're playing the Apollo and I was like yeah, yeah. well and I'll play it again next year yeah, yeah, like, yeah. calm down yeah, yeah. And then I walked into the room and it was just like, honest, it was like I opened the door and it was like when you get off a plane, like this sort of warm air was just like, fuck. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What? Yeah, man. And then, and it took, and then like I was backstage the whole time and then I was like, obviously, uh, a, a thing people might not know is like when you play at like those bigger rooms, like all of a sudden everyone, people that, there's people that work on your tour that you don't, they all come. Yeah. You didn't, I, they, I don't meet them at the Colchester Arts Centre. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. when you're at the Apollo, they're all like there and they're like eating your apples and I'm like, what's going on? <laughs> yeah, I remember, it's a, a weird thing. I remember having that years ago. I was at Montreal, me and Jimmy Carr were, and we went to watch Chappelle before Chappelle became Chappelle again. Um, so he was like this guy that used to do Chappelle show. Yeah. And uh, we watched it and the show was really great. And then uh, Jimmy went, well, let's go backstage and say hello. I was like, you fucking mad. Yeah. We can't just wander in. And he was like, well, I'm going to do it. And he did. He wandered in there and the door shut and I could hear Jimmy in there like, uh, 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 uh. and I was just going, bloody hell. But I was thinking about it from the point of Chappelle. I was thinking, I, I would be going, who the fuck is this butler eating my apples? Yeah. Like, but like, do you know what I mean? Because there's nothing worse than when you've just done a great gig. It's the weirdest I ever had was Martin from Homes Under the Hammer. No yeah. way. <laughs> but so I, we just. <laughs> that is, so that <laughs> is the that is the greatest name drop in podcasting yeah. history. It was mad. Where, where were you? So I did the Albert Hall. <laughs> the Albert Hall. And, <laughs> and, and he was, it was and he it was, was knocking on walls. Yeah, yeah decent. Yeah, decent exactly. Scarf, bum, bum, ba -dum, bum, 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 bum. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it was so bizarre because I sort of come off you did the gig and I look around and I, I see my brother's there and I, and I sort of do a double take and go I'm pretty sure my brother's talking to Martin from Hammer <laughs> and he, Daniel had met him on a, a tube a tube station and had just gone and go oh my brother's playing the Albert Hall if you want to come along I'm, I mean, and I was like and I pulled Daniel to one side and said why the fuck is Martin from Hammer here and he was like because I'm trying to get into real estate like that. No. And I said, real estate? Like that. He went, shut up, rush, I understand. And then he was talking about Martin. Like, uh, Martin doesn't like prawns. Like, he was, <laughs> but he was like, like, Martin was his friend. He's got his number. Did he and come backstage? So, he was Martin backstage. from Holmes Hammer was backstage. He was backstage. <laughs> drinking I, my beers, like, handing the Skittles, which is not a metaphor. There's actual Skittles. Skittles, yeah. yeah, yeah.